Do your components have style? After this episode, they will. Hey, and welcome to episode 35 of Code Hour. This is going to be a real quick one. This is kind of a follow-on to episode 32, which I did a couple months ago, which was Blazor versus Angular. And in that episode, I kind of panned Blazor. I didn't pan it. I think Blazor is an amazing technology. But I, I said that I personally wouldn't use it on a new project for a larger, you know, more professional financial services, for example, applications. And one of the main showstoppers for me was the fact that it didn't support component level CSS. Fortunately, it now does, which is really cool. This was released in .NET 5 which actually came out just a couple weeks after I recorded that episode. And so I really want to do a follow-on to that episode to show component-level CSS that was released in the Blazor 5 version. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right in to showing you how to upgrade. And actually, actually before I do, I should just say thank you very much to TurboChamp, TurboChamp was somebody who submitted a pull request and performed the full upgrade for me as a pull request on the Typer Shark. So thank you very much to TurboChamp. Now I'm just going to show part of what he did, and I'm going to take it one step further by also not only showing component level CSS, but also I'm going to show how to do a CSS preprocessor, SAS or less. I'll probably do SAS. So let's get started. This is the code that handles the CSS, the cascading style sheets, for the entire application. And it's in here in a CSS folder called typershark.css. And it's, it's got all of the CSS for everything. This was the version that we had to do things in Blazor 3. And you'll see there's you know things for the sky. Like that's only applicable to the game page, which again, you don't have to watch the previous episode but it might be a little bit helpful and it might be worth going back and checking it out. But the long version short is that this is a very simple typing game and this is the game page. And so the sky here, for instance, is relevant. It's got a linear gradient going from white to light blue uh, or light blue to white, depending on which direction you're talking about. Similar, there's another gradient here and another gradient here. And uh, then there's things like sharks, and there's a shark component, but it would be really nice if this class could just be on the shark component. So to do that, uh, the upgrade has already occurred. I just need to do the component level CSS part of it. So I'm going to jump over to page and game.razor. So what we're going to do is, actually, before I even get started, how about I make a change to this just to prove to you that this is what's going on. I'll probably make this, let's say it's a uh, 255, let's make it red. We'll say uh, red sky in the morn, sailors take warn, is that right? Red sky at night, sailors delight. Okay, there we go. So we've got a red uh, blue gradient going on. So that is actually taking effect in the CSS file, the global CSS file. I'm gonna change that back to what it was. And now, this is the game.razor. And if we call this component, it'd be so nice if we could just right click and say add new component, but the tooling's not quite there yet, as is often the case with Blazor. It's still just a little bit, I wouldn't call it immature, but it, it is, the tooling's not quite as great as it is in other items. Okay, we're going to add a new style sheet. Let's just call it game.razor.css and we name it when we name it that way then it'll put this file underneath here so that's kind of nice and let's take just the bits which are relevant for that which consists of these three classes plunk them over here and if this works then it should well let's take this and we'll make the sky let's make it very green 
it's not very pretty color. Well, whatever. We'll see if it works. So at this point, I'm going to save. And this is what I did last time. I, had, I did a Control F5 and had the game running in Blazor. So it's still running. It's not with an F5, not with debugging. And if I just refresh it right now, it's probably not going to work. And the reason it worked. Hmm. Okay, great. <laughs> Fantastic. So I'll just put that back to its previous color. I'm going to hit save and refresh. And yeah, see, it's now it's not taking. Oh, it must have automatically done a compile in the background. So it the, the reason for this is that when you're in the CSS files, you can make changes and refresh, and it automatically changes those. But when you're doing component-level CSS, then you have to recompile. So it's... The component level CSS is great, but it's not quite as convenient as Angular's component level CSS, or at least as fast. So I have to do Control Shift B. I'm going to do a compile, and now the green should turn back to blue. There we go. Okay, great. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Now I am going to. I would love to be able to have variable names. Wouldn't it be nice if I could say? I would like the sky to go from you know, light gray to blue and have a variable name. So we can do, or, you know, that's that's naming for an individual place, but it would be really cool if we could have that in multiple places or pre-compile, pre pre CSS pre-compilers are wonderful for lots of things. You can also include common files. You can have a common list of all of your variables in a global that styles folder and you can just pick out those names that are all defined there. That's one of many wonderful things you can do with precompilers. So let's do it. Now it would be tempting to say, well, I could just add add a new item. And notice when I did CSS here, it said, hey, would you like to do a less file or a SAS file? Oh, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Let's do that. Boom, there's our, there's our CSS file. And if I go over to the, take, get rid of all of that. In fact, I'll just delete that, delete that file. Now I'm gonna compile it. What do you think, is this gonna work? No, the sky's completely disappeared. Would have been nice if that had worked, but unfortunately, Blazor does not have any precompiler support out of the box. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to add. So we just need a component that'll do that for us. So if we zip on over to dependencies and the package manager, we can pull down from the new J, a SAS builder. Now, the most popular SAS builder over here by downloads is this one by Saren Nielsen. And I have tried this one, and it works okay, but it seems to put itself, inject itself in the wrong state in the compiler, and so you end up having to, it, it generates the CSS file, and, and, but then you have to compile again to have it take effect, or you have to rebuild every time, which is a little bit inconvenient. So the one that I've found that actually works a little bit better is this one, the second most popular one, uh, John von Runeberg, and uh, was a big fan of zipping on over to the GitHub page and saying, thank you, appreciate all of your hard work here. And that is actually all that's necessary. It just works from here on out. Watch this, I'm gonna compile it and it's going to create, there it is, and it created a CSS file. Boom, and it's all uh, compiled and, and minified. And if I were to now go and, oh, I already built it. Yep, build it, refresh, and the sky should come back now. Yes, excellent, the sky came back. And let's say I were to make a red sky again. Oop, forgot to compile. I do have to compile, and you'll notice, by the way, if you pop over to the output directory, SAS files compiled, it put that directly into the build output. And there we go, we got our red sky again. So I suppose the only other thing we could do is maybe add a variable just to prove that SAS is actually working. All right, so let's do, I think it's dollar sign. All 
right, I'm compiling that. I, I added in my variable, defined it up here, and refresh. That, yeah, that seemed to work. That seemed to work. OK, if we put this back to, I can't remember what it was, like 120 or something. And there we go. It worked beautiful. So this has been component level CSS and precompiler with SAS in Blazor. And I have to say, I love this feature, and it makes Blazor so much more attractive to me. And I, I probably would, at this point, use it for new projects in general. In, in, in general, I think Blazor is fabulous now. It's really solid pro product, and uh, I love it. Component-level CSS just puts it over the top for me. So I uh, hope this was helpful. And uh, if you enjoyed, please like subscribe and all that, and I'll see you again uh, next Code Hour. Bye now. Bye now.